Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It is of course Chelsea of She Designs Things. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing more tips and trips for Google Sites for all of you. So let's just go ahead and jump into the video. Tip number one, the search icon located in the top left hand corner of your Google site can be disabled if you upgrade your Google site account. So this tip is for those of you who have the Google starter account, you might want to upgrade to the tier that's just above it, which is I think about $12 a month versus the $6 a month that it generally will cost. This will allow you to click on the settings and actually hide the search icon without having to hide your pages in a navigation. However, I would like to see an option in Google for you to hide the page in navigation based on the page that you're looking at. So for example, if I don't want these pages to show up, I just don't want them to show up on the home page. But once you navigate to any of the other pages, I still want a traditional Google navigation on those pages. I would really like to see this happen inside of Google. And I think that would actually make Google sites even better. Now, you guys know I absolutely love to bring in additional assets into my Google Sites. A lot of the assets that I bring into my Google Sites happen to be PNGs. So this is the second tip, which is to use less PNGs. If you look at my limited design series, most of those actually use way less PNG assets. I've decided that I want to create cleaner designs without bringing in such heavy assets. PNGs, while beautiful and crisp and clear, tend to slow down your site because they are much larger files. If you want your Google site to load faster, you want to use less of these assets. I see people bringing in buttons and bringing in this and basically their entire site is made of images. Oh my goodness, you will not rank. You will not rank anywhere. If you rank anywhere, I am surprised. I am flabbergasted. Kids, please tell me your secrets. Please tell me your secrets. I'm not even kidding because it just seems mind blowing to me to even think to do that. Just my suggestion, use way less PNGs. However, the next tip is gonna be one that's probably gonna surprise and shock a lot of you. If you have to bring in PNGs or any other image file that's larger, do the following thing. And this is tip number three. So in this tip, it requires you to upload your massive PNG image and then re-download it to your computer from your live Google site and then just upload that image back into your Google site. This does two things and I learned this by accident completely. Google will place your image in its server and therefore when you go to download the image, it's going to be smaller. It is not going to be that super large, massive image that you have uploaded into your Google site. As a great example, I'm going to use this section here um, to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So here I have the original image, which by the way is cropped. So I'm going to double click on it just so you can see that this image in here is cropped. I have decided to crop it in and it's a transparent PNG around the background. What it used to be was HTML, but I figured that a lot of people want to just have something that's going to be easy to create. So instead of making it super complicated, I came up with just creating this block here using some text and then exporting it as a transparent PNG. So now I'm going to show you what downloading the um, transparent PNG will look like if you're going to download it inside of the um, workspace or the preview mode. So while in the preview mode, all you'll do is right click, save image as, and then just save it in the folder that you want. So I'm just going to save this in my drive. And now I'm going to just show you what it looks like, the file size and the original file size that I have uploaded. See here, this is the second image. So the original size, 
And if I click in here, I'm going to hover just so you can see it's 72.3 kilobytes. While that is relatively small, we can get even smaller. So now that I've shown you where you don't want to get it, you want to make sure you copy the image from the actual published view, not in the preview mode. And I'll show you what that image will look like once you download it. So this is the preview in the Google panel and this is the live site. I'm gonna right click on this image and save the image and I'm gonna save it into my folder and just save it in here. So now that the image has been saved, this is what it's looking like. We can see this is the original, this is the crop. And the crop is 68.6 .6 kilobytes. But if I double click just to show you what they both look like, there is no loss as far as the quality of the images. So a lot of folks ask, how do I get high, high quality images? I upload them high quality to begin with. <laughs> and then I download them at a much smaller size. So this is one trick that nobody has ever Actually, I've never seen a single person even know this, but you can't even tell. I'm literally clicking back and forth between the two and you can't tell a difference. So that is super important to your Google site. Now I'm going to share with you how this works. If you're going to be adding in PNG button assets as well. So here is a PNG button file that I've created inside of Canva. This allows my clients to change their buttons however they want. And it also features detailed instructions if they want to use an HTML button. So for these PNG buttons, okay, everybody brings them in and then they're ginormous. But I don't know if you've noticed this, but on my design, they are not. They are an appropriate size as a PNG button. And I am not doing anything crazy. What I am doing is understanding what I'm doing, um, which I find a lot of people aren't doing. They're making these files with the whole file is a button. Don't do that. Don't do that. Whatever you do, do not do that. Actually make the asset way smaller as you have a lot of space around here and this is going to help you. So now let's bring this in and I'm just going to use it. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to make it like yellow because I want it to stand out and I want you guys to see where I'm going to make this change. So I am just going to download this image as it's large, um, like file size with the transparent background. There's a couple of them in here. So let me just save that and just download it. Now that it is downloaded, I'm going to double click just so you can see. Here's the here's what it looks like you know, schedule consultation, uh, a pretty, you know, decent size. And let's just look at how large the file size is. So here we have the button and the file size is 30.6 kilobytes. So I know that we can get this way smaller. So let's just go ahead and add it to that Google site. I'm going to move this off to the side, head on back to Lola Joy, and I'm going to scroll down to where I have this schedule consultation. And I'm going to replace this image by uploading the button as you see the button here and select open and now i've added it to this size now i again made sure that i played around with the sizing of my google size to see what was going to render the best button if the be button was going to look crazy on a mobile device i wasn't going to use it but as you see it ain't looking crazy because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna now publish this to show you if, how much we're gonna lose as far as that weight, that size and side of the Google site. So just publish. All right, so now that it's published, I'm gonna select view. And I see I have the yellow button here. So now on the yellow button, I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna save image as and yep, I'm going to save it in this folder just so I can open up so you guys can see it side by side. So now it's saved and here are the two buttons next to each other. All right, so they are obviously completely different sizes as far as like the the actual length and width. The, those are completely different. So again, let's look at the PNG button that I brought into the Google site. How large that file was was a 32.6 kilobytes and this new size is 23.2 kilobytes. And so 
this is the size that I want to work with when it comes to these PNG assets. I don't want something that's going to be super massive, super heavy. So this is going to work. So instead of just leaving it on your Google site because you know it's rendering it that way, upload this file this one remove this one and upload this one it will save you so much as far as the weight of your google site so my next tip should be kind of a no-brainer since we're on images and that is to use jpegs wherever you can wherever you can use jpegs um, I know that all of my photos seem extraordinarily high quality and that's because if you know this is me <laughs> and I am a professional photographer so when I started creating websites and web designs and I started primarily like look I don't have time to be trying to create things that my clients want to contact me and ask me a billion questions about how to make changes for this that and the other so when I decided that I would start creating Google sites for my clients so that they can leave me alone, <laughs> I just, I wanted more free time. I wanted to make sure that if they were going to be using images, the images would still appear crisp and clean. And so I really worked to bring in my JPEGs and make sure that I'm bringing in high quality images to begin with, but they don't have to be massive all the time because Google will naturally just suppress and compress those images down but you won't lose that quality so keep that in mind when you are bringing in those JPEGs for your Google site so here I am under my LR shop you'll be able to see that this button is actually a stripe button now could have used a regular stripe link but I was lazy so I said you know what I'm gonna just give the button a try and I decided that hey it's really not that bad it looks pretty good so you can have an e-commerce style shop selling whatever you want in your Google site my suggestion for all of you who do have an e-commerce shop is stop using full page embeds on your Google site uh, this is so important to your SEO if you are using a full page embed, understand that an embed is stating to the crawlers of your site that this is this is some other information from another source, but I'm just showing it on my site. That's not helpful for you for you for ranking. So I had a, um, a consultation uh, a couple days ago and the client was like, I just want my site to rank. So as I've gone through their, their site, I was like, your site has no content. And they're like, what do you mean my site has no content? Well, you just have a embed on every single thing, including the text. The text that's on your site is an embed. And so the only thing that the crawlers are reading on your site is literally the title of the page. And they were like, whoa. Well, how can I fix this? I said, very simple, add actual content to your page. It's just that simple. Add actual content to your page. Whatever you're affiliating with, if you're doing like, I think this client, this client was doing affiliate marketing. So if you have some content, you're, so you have like a, um, a listing of a products that you want to share with clients and you want to have that link then make sure that affiliate page is well designed. So here's a great example. This is from my um, travel agency client. I redid their travel favorites page and these have affiliate links on them. So there's a link to purchase the product right here. So use this link to purchase at um, a discount on Amazon and there you have it. So my suggestion is if you are gonna be doing any affiliate marketing, Make sure you actually have content on the page. I am just using a regular image here. And then for the links, I'm just adding the link inside of the page. And this will better serve you for your SEO. And it's honestly the, the proper way because people are really misusing an embed. An embed on your Google site is akin to a plugin elsewhere. Just so we're clear. Just so we're clear.
All right, so I do hope this video was helpful in helping you, uh, you know, create and design in Google site. And I do want to make more tips and trick videos, um, especially since I did up date or upgrade my own Google account. And so since I updated, there are just so many things that I didn't know that I could do um, until I got into a higher tier workspace account. Now, Google sites, of course, is free for any Gmail user. It is super free is gonna remain free as far as I know, it's not a paid service. And as far as my blogs go, y'all know I've switched to using Blogger to handle and service blogs. And Google actually prefers this as your blog host. I will make a separate video about that in the future. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see ya.